Hey guys, what's up? I'm back with yet another video of the iQOO 3. Now this phone is a performance monster. I've been using it day in and day out and the specs inside are just crazy and, and the kind of performance that I've been getting in regular usage is just incredible. So what I wanted to do in this video is actually, you know, run a few benchmarks, uh, run an entire battery test from 0 to 100 and play a little bit of PUBG for you guys and get you the final scores and give you a concrete proof of why the iQOO 3 possibly could be the best performance monster for you guys. Now, while I'm talking about the performance of the phone, I really want to talk about the specs inside as well. You get a Snapdragon 865 uh, processor inside with Adreno 650 GPU, and you get 12 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM and 256 GB of UFS 3.1 storage. This is possibly by far the best specs you can get on the market right now. So you know what, without wasting any more time, let's get down to our performance review of the new iQOO 3. All right, so now we're gonna show you guys how long it takes the iQOO 3 to charge from zero to 100%. So let's start off with the test. So as soon as I hit the stopwatch, we'll also switch on the charger. Three, two, one, go. And there we go, we have liftoff. All right, so now we have touched 15 minutes and the battery has charged up to 46%. So this is with screen on and I'm pretty sure that, uh, you know, if you keep screen off, then it will charge up to 50% in 15 minutes. Uh, so let's check how long it takes to charge up to 50% now. So we've touched 50% of charge and it's taken almost 17 minutes for the, you know, iQOO 3 to charge up to 50% with screen on. Uh, this is how the 55 watt fast charger on the iQOO 3 performs. It's extremely great. And, uh, you know, if you extrapolate that information, technically it should take uh, around 34 minutes to charge to 100%, but that's exactly not how it's going to happen. Primarily because uh, in the final bits of the charge test, it'll trickle down uh, the speed. So we'll take a look at how long it takes to charge from zero to 100. All right, so the iQOO 3 charged from zero to 100 overall in 52 minutes, but yes, of course, 50 minutes in 15%. So that's pretty great. And that keeps up to brands claims as well. All right, so now we're gonna be starting off with the anti two benchmark test. Let's start off. As you can see right now, the iQ3 is just crunching through all the frames and the crazy graphics performance. I haven't seen such kind of, uh, you know, speed with anti two test. All right, so now we are at the final score. And as you guys can see on your screens right now, it's at 5,94,541. This is just excellent numbers aided by the LPDDR5, 12 gigs of RAM, and uh, the UFS 3.1 fast storage as well. Overall, this is definitely the best benchmark score that we have achieved till now. This is just incredible numbers. Of course, these are just benchmarks, but in real life, we gotta test out the gaming performance as well. So now let's start off with the Geekbench test and let's see what kind of scores we get. This is a CPU intensive test. I'm really excited to see what kind of scores we get with Geekbench after the crazy, crazy good Android score that we got. All right, so we're done with the Geekbench test. The single core score is 922 and the multi-core score is 3,337. This is just crazy numbers. In the end, I'll definitely show you guys how it compares against the scores of the Snapdragon 855 Plus, which was available on last year's flagship phones. This time around, looks like uh, Snapdragon 865 has a quantum leap in performance jump. 
All right, so the final test we're going to be running is to test out the storage performance. Of course, this one, uh, the iQ3 has UFS 3.1 storage. So I'm expecting great read write speeds of at least above 1500 and above 700. So let's just check that out. All right, that was really fast. And like I expected, the scores are excellent too. The sequential read speed is around 1742 and the write speed is 725. All right, so these are the best uh, you know, scores you can find across any smartphone for storage performance. Uh, this should mean that, you know, write speeds to your disks and when you're copying files or when you're opening apps, all of that should be really fast on the iQ3. Alright, so now we're going to be playing PUBG and I'm also recording the frame rates and everything. And you can see that game assistant mode is on with a lot of, uh, you know, enhancements, including the 180 Hz, uh, you know, touch refresh rate as well. Plus, I'm going to be using the triggers for playing uh, this, you know, entire session. Currently, it's running at uh, HDR and Ultra, which tops out at 40 FPS. What I'm going to be doing is actually trying to figure out how much uh, you, you know, what kind of performance do you get? What's the median FPS? Plus with Game Bench, you can also see the estimated playtime and the temperatures that have dropped or raised. Uh, so let's start off with the game and see how Snapdragon 865 performs uh, with PUBG and I'm playing Evo Ground. Uh, I'm gonna be playing at least 30 minutes of the game to see how it performs and give you final benchmarks numbers in the end. Uh, already I can see that the touch response is absolutely incredible. And uh, if you guys wanna see how it looks with the air triggers, there you go, I've already configured it. Uh, it's damn simple and you know I'm actually pressing the button on the top to scope and the button on the right to sort of shoot so let's see let's just go out so if I'm playing like a noob please excuse me uh, because um, I'm trying to concentrate on the numbers and the benchmark out here you can see that there's a consistent 40 FPS frame rate and there you go I've already gotten killed the advantages of having a trigger cannot be overstated. It actually makes it very easy to play the game and, uh, you know, gives you a competitive edge as well. So the first game is over and as you can see we got a consistent 40 fps uh, you know frame rate i'm going to start off the second game right now uh, at least during the game obviously it's dropping frames right now but uh, you know during the game you got a consistent 40 fps frame rate which is possibly what we're going to see uh, as the median fps uh, in the final uh, you know score that we get out of game bench it should be somewhere around 39 and 40 fps So the gaming performance of PUBG on iQ3 was excellent. I got a median FPS of around 40 FPS and the FPS stability of 97% is something that is very important and the FPS stability with just 30 minutes of gameplay was still very good at 97%. So if you actually play for longer, the FPS stability will also definitely improve. Now what's also very, very good is the estimated playtime of six hours and 40 minutes that uh, you know the iQ3 can achieve. So apart from giving you possibly the best gaming experience on an Android smartphone with PUBG, you also get an estimated playtime of 6 hours 40 minutes, so the battery life is going to be excellent as well. You know what, when I started the game, uh, the battery temperature was around 35 degrees. And the best thing about the iQ3 is that after the game ended after 30 minutes, the battery temperature just raised only 2 degrees more to 37 degrees Celsius. So which means that the thermal performance of the iQ3 is just excellent uh, this is something that once again i haven't noticed in a lot of even 855 plus phones so from 35 degrees to 37 degrees only uh, the temperature control is in check and the thermals are in check plus the battery performance is great plus you also get excellent fps with great fps stability as well all right so we are at the end of the video you guys saw the performance numbers on your screen 
you must have you know been shocked of course primarily because the numbers are just crazy i don't even have to sell it the moment you take the phone out of the box and start using it you will see the speedy performance from the get go i'm pretty sure that a lot of you guys want to actually check it out and do let me know what do you think of the iQOO 3's performance in the comment section